Ready? Good evening. This is a public meeting of the Board of Education of Clark Public Schools. Adequate notice of this meeting has been given in accordance with PL 1975, Chapter 231, and that a special notice was made in conformance with Section 13 of the Act. I get a motion from the public. Ms. Grayo, Mr. Smorl, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, at this time we'll just rise for a pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. All right, we'll start with a roll call, please. Ms. Aklonis? Present. Mr. Bensavinga? Here. Mr. Bohm? Here. Mr. Breedy? Here. Ms. Guerrero? Here. Ms. Harrison? Here. Ms. Hickman? Here. Mr. Lewis? Here. Mr. Smorrell? Here. And Mr. Dunkersloop? Here. Having 10 board members, we have a quorum. At this time, we'll do, uh, can I get a motion for the approval of minutes from last month? I see Ms. Aklonis and then Mr. Bensavinga. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Michaelonis? Yes. Mr. Bensavinga? Yes. Mr. Bohm? Yes. Mr. Breedy? Yes. Ms. Guerrero? Yes. Ms. Harrison? Yes. Ms. Hickman? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Smorrell? Yes. And Mr. Dunkerson? Yes. Motion carried. So at this time, we'll open the floor to the public for agenda items only. So if there's anything on the agenda that you would like to discuss, now would be the time to come up and discuss the items on the agenda. If your topic is not on the agenda, you'll have time at the end of the meeting. You can just come up and state your name and address for the record, and you have three minutes. Ah, there we go. Hi, everybody. My name is Michelle Gargiulo. I live on Hayes Avenue in Clark. Um, I am here, uh, us ladies are here to address the, um, the playground situation at Henley Elementary School, which I know is on the agenda number 20. Um, I understand that we are voting on what is to be a chain link contraption. Am I saying that right? I'm sorry, I don't have that exact note. They're replacing a chain link structure as well as putting a barrier in. Um, so first, I just want to say thank you for attending to this matter. This um, clearly was a safety issue for some time, um, and so we are happy with that. I, I think the concern right now um, is really to figure out what we are doing in the future for our playground as far as putting a plan into place. The, the playground was built in 2001, um, and I know it was phased into 2004, uh, that it was um, all said and done. So we have an over 20 year old, you know, over two decades. Uh, I'm not sure if you know that a playground runs its course about 15 to 20 years uh, before it really starts to deteriorate in, in, in need of some, you know, um, new, new love. <clears throat> Excuse me. So really, it's a safety issue for me, um, as well as I know a lot of parents uh, at the Henley School District because it's an old playground and there's a lot going on with it. We don't want to replace things piece by piece. Right now, this barrier uh, is a Band-Aid. So yes, we are very grateful that our children are now going to be safe. Um, you know, they're not going to fall through a plywood, you know, piece of plywood. Uh, but something needs to be done as far as Funding, funding for a new playground. Um, it's, there, there's no fence up, the mulch is old. There's just, it's, it's really not even in compliance anymore um, to, to the new standards. And really what we want in place, obviously you can't give that to me today, but we need something to assure that our children uh, are, are going to have a, a, a playground, a nice playground in the future. This is not, you know, I have a, a, a child that will be going next year to Henley. Uh, he's got six years. I have another child who's there now. Uh, you know, they're young once, and I don't, the five-year plan it's, isn't, isn't going to work for me. Uh, I don't think it's going to work for these ladies either. Um, 
and that's really what I have to say on that is, is uh, you know, we're here all willing to put in the time and the effort to raise funds. I'm not sure, you know, what we can do. I'm thinking sponsors. I, 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 have, I have a lot of ideas in my head um, of, of things that need to be done. But we need to put something in place to ensure that these children have a, have a, a, a future playground there that's not going to deteriorate piece by piece. Uh, I, I think your points are well taken. Um, we certainly um, are late to the dance on taking care of the problem at Henley with the playground. Right. We are going to take care of what the situation is at this time. We're assessing both playgrounds in a way of being outdated and what the situation is. So we're going to assess that. The other point that I want to make, and we talked about this, we're going to make a concerted effort for beautification in the Valley and Henley schools. There's a lot of money that's needed in the classrooms, in the hallways, bathrooms. So this is something that we're going to tackle in the spring for summertime improvements. Because uh, looking at Valley and Henley, that's something that being involved with building the grounds, we need to take care of. Uh, the elementaries are critical. More important, the playgrounds I know you spoke at the uh, council meeting, and I went over personally to look and see the situation. Even if everything is perfect, plywood doesn't make it work. You don't want to see something like that. We're a little bit better than that. So rather than running away from the problem, we want to correct it. And I thank you for coming out, supporting not only the children, but the school, because we want to do exactly what you're talking about but we will assess it. It's going to be repaired. It's basically going to be taken care of. But we're going to look at the overview of two playgrounds, what it would cost us, what it would mean to basically uh, have the beautification of, of the playground. So I want to thank you for coming out. I think you're brave. You're committed to the schools. And I believe the board is, too. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you for your time, everyone. Thanks. All right, is there anybody else that would like to talk about agenda items only? Agenda items only? All right, so seeing none, we'll close out that portion of the meeting. We'll move on to personnel. Can I get a motion on personnel items one through six and addenda item number one that, I'm paraphrasing, approval hereby given to Amanda Clark, CHK assistant principal, to receive a stipend for additional duties assumed during September 23 through November 23. Can I get a motion? Mr. Lewis, followed by Mr. Ben Savenga. Any questions or comments? Roll call, please. Zach Alonis? Yes. Yes. Ben Savinga? Yes. Mr. Bohm? Yes. Mr. Breedy? Yes. Mr. Guerrero? Abstain on two, three, and addendum number one, and yes on the rest. <clears throat> Thank you. Ms. Harrison? Yes. Ms. Hickman? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Smorrell? Yes. And Mr. Dunkers? Yes. Mr. Carried? Thank you. Moving on to curriculum, we would have item number seven. Can I get a motion? Ms. Akalonis, followed by Mr. Breedy. Any questions or comments? Roll call, please. Akalonis? Yes. Mr. Bensavinga? Yes. Mr. Bohm? Yes. Mr. Breedy? Yes. Ms. Guerrero? Abstain. Ms. Harrison? Yes. Ms. Aikman? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Smurl? Yes. And Mr. Dr. Sloop? Yes. Motion carried. On policy, we have items 8 through 10. Can I get a motion? Can I get a motion? Mr. Pensavanga, followed by Ms. Hickman. Any questions or comments? Roll call, please. Ms. Akalonis? Yes. Mr. Pensavanga? Yes. Mr. Bohm? Yes. Mr. Breedy? Yes. Ms. Guerrero? Yes. Ms. Harris? Yes. Ms. Hickman? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Smorrell? Yes. And Mr. Dunker Sloop? Yes. Motion carried. And then we have board governance. We have items 11 and 12. Can I get a motion? Ms. Akalonis, Ms. Hickman. Any questions or comments? Roll call, please. Akalonis? Yes. Mr. Ben Savinga? Yes. Mr. Bohm? Yes. Mr. Breedy? Yes. Ms. Guerrero? Abstain on 11, yes on 12. Ms. Harrison? Yes. Ms. Hickman? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Smurl? Yes. And Mr. Dunkersley? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. And then on finance, we have items 13 to 23 and addendum number two. 
which reads, approval is hereby given to accept the change order number three from Open Systems Integrations for work related to the camera upgrade project at a total cost of 58.45, which will be deducted from the project allowance of 25,000. Can I get a motion? Mr. Smorl, followed by Mr. Breedy. Any questions or comments on those? Roll call then, please. Mr. Akalonis? Yes. Mr. Bessavinga? Yes. Mr. Bohm? Yes. Mr. Breedy? Yes. Ms. Guerrero? Abstain on 20, yes on the rest. Ms. Harrison? Yes. Ms. Hickman? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Smorrell? Yes. And Mr. Dunkers? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Uh, we'll hand it over to Mr. Grande for the report of the superintendent. Good evening and thank you, Mr. Dunkers. This past month in November, our ALJ AP research students successfully went through their IRB review process so that they can conduct their research, and Abigail being one of them, congratulations. Our Schools to Watch recertification visit takes place tomorrow at Carl H. Kumpf so we can maintain that recognition for our middle school. The Making a Difference student recognition program took place at Frank Hanley School at the end of November to recognize students who make a difference in the lives of others. And the Thanksgiving flow parade took place at Valley Road School the day before Thanksgiving. Our holiday concerts, all of which are in the ALJ Auditorium at 7 p.m., ALJ on Tuesday the 12th, Valley Road School Wednesday the 13th, Carl H. Kumpf Thursday the 14th, and Frank K. Henley closes out on Wednesday the 20th. Friday the 22nd is our last day for students and teachers, with an early dismissal being in place. Our winter break begins on Monday the 25th and runs through Monday, January the 1st. Schools reopen on Tuesday the 2nd. And on behalf of the Clark Schools, happy holidays to you and your families. Thank you and have a great evening. Thank you, Mr. Grande. At this time, we'll take a report of the committees. Yes, Ms. Aguilar? I, I just have a comment to make. The Education and Technology Committee did meet a couple of weeks ago, and there was a lengthy report. But I was unable, because of the uh, shortness of the executive committee uh, tonight, I was unable to give the report to the board first. So I will postpone my report to the public for a future meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Akalonis. Mr. Small? Yeah, um, Finance Committee met last month. Um, we're looking into uh, <clears throat> early part investigation regarding solar panels and er energy saving opportunities. Um, at this point in time, we're doing a lot of data gathering. We're, we're getting educated. Um, we will be receiving some proposals, um, I believe, within the next month or so. Um, in terms of solar, solar panel solutions and see if that's something that really makes sense for our district. It, may, it, it could result, based on the early education that we've gotten, could result in a significant savings to the district if it is, is, if it is designed the way it's being explained to us right now. So more to come, but um, we're taking steps in, in, in that direction as it relates to those two initiatives. Thank you, Mr. Small. Mr. Lewis? From the personnel side, I want to thank Amanda Clark. She filled in three months. She did a fantastic job at Comf, uh, filling in for Mr. Delmonico, that um, it would be remiss if I didn't thank Amanda for the work. It was, it was flawless what she did in her three-month tenure over at Comf. So thank you, Mrs. Clark. Thank you, Mr. Lewis. Any other report of the committees this time? All right, so seeing none, we'll move to either new, uh, unfinished, or new business. I just have one comment. Yes, Ms. Gray. Uh, just as a reminder to board members, uh, tomorrow at uh, 7 o'clock is the, or 6.45, is Union County School Board Association meeting. It will be held at Cranford High School, um, and it, there is still time for board members to uh, register for that. Thank you, Mrs. Gray. Any other unfinished or new business? All right, Abigail, we'll pass it over to you. Good evening. Thank you. I'll begin with events going on at Arthur L. Johnson. This past week, the blood drive was held with many volunteers giving up time to give blood. And this afternoon, the book club hosted an ornament making event for each organization in ALJ to be represented on the Media Center's holiday tree. The students of the Holocaust and Genocide class received a grant to travel to Washington, D.C. last Tuesday and got to speak to the child of a Holocaust survivor and visit the nation's Holocaust Museum. Looking at ALJ's theater department, the Fall Play Marvin's Room was a great success, and auditions for the spring musical Mean Girls begin this week. This upcoming Thursday is the opening day for the swimming and ice hockey teams. The opening day of girls and boys basketball is December 14th, and the wrestling team begins its season on the 15th. 
Moving on to come, the annual turkey splash was held at Asbury Park on November 18th and the Jingle All the Way 3K on December 3rd. Between these two events, the Kumpf team raised over $5,000 for the New Jersey Special Olympics. On December 5th, the site visit team from New Jersey Schools to Watch will visit as part of the school's redesignation three process. If Kumpf receives this redesignation, the school will be honored in Washington, D.C. in the spring. The next Kumpf PTA meeting will be held on December 7th, and the annual winter concert will be held on Thursday, December 14th at 7 p.m. at ALJ. Moving on to the elementary schools, Henley celebrated our local veterans on Wednesday, November 8th. The Henley Select Choir celebrated the start of the holiday season at the Clark Festival over the Thanksgiving weekend. Parent-teacher conferences were held over the past few weeks as mid-marking period approached. They also welcomed some Clark preschoolers to join kindergarten classes for art and music experiences. Students nominated for making a difference in the school community were recognized at a ceremony on Tuesday, November 21st. Looking forward to December, families are adding gingerbread decor to the school hallways and class parties will be held. The PTA annual holiday boutique is scheduled as well as a PJ and movie event. The first trimester ends December 8th and progress reports will be available before the winter break. Valley Road School has also had a busy November. A player from the Harlem Wizards came and spoke to the children. The PTA held a bingo night, a vendor night for the community to shop, and a clothing drive this past month. The Veterans Day Assembly was held, and at the Thanksful Reading Event Program for grades two and three, students heard and did activity. Students heard stories and did activities. This was followed by the Thanksgiving Parade, where students made balloons, balloon floats, and dressed up. This upcoming month, the Valley Road concert will be held in both the school the morning of December 12th and at ALJ the following night. There will be a tremendous citizens' assembly with the awards going to students who get nominated by staff for being good school citizens. That's all I have for this month's report. Thank you. Thank you, Abigail. All right, so moving from that part, we'll open it up to the public for any non-agenda items. So if there's anything that's not on the agenda that you'd like to come up and discuss, now would be the time. State your name and your address for the record, and you have three minutes. Uh, Bill Draghi, uh, 47 Post Road, Clark, New Jersey. Um, I, uh, I heard recently that um, scholastic books um, are uh, doing a very poor job in informing students that they should be thinking about uh, their LGBTQ uh, uh, transgender uh, uh, capabilities and stuff. And it's putting the ideas into their minds that maybe their sex should be a different sex. So uh, I hope you are not, have, do not have any scholastics books uh, in the libraries are going to the children because it's, uh, I think that would be very bad uh, to be putting this, this, these ideas in the minds of the children. Uh, if you, don't want, if you, if you uh, would not want your own children to read things like this, then you cer certainly shouldn't have uh, other children or students in Clark reading books like this, and I heard that scholastic, scholastic books is very bad uh, in, in doing things like that. And also, uh, I heard recently that uh, Governor Murphy is, came out, uh, I don't know whether it was a, a bill they passed or something that, although I, mean, I knew this was partially true anyway, that if a student is transgender, no one in the school, none, none of the teachers are allowed to tell the parents of that child that that person is transgender. And if you, if you, any of you have children, if you uh, had a child and they were transgender, I think all of you would want to know that that, ch that child was thinking about it. And if the school would do something, like give them hormones or something without telling the parents, uh, that would be so evil. Uh, going by the student and not, the parent, not telling the parents about it. I know that, I think uh, 
the rule is if, if, if the child wants an aspirin, they have to ask the parent. Well, this is so much more important than something like an aspirin. If the child is thinking about becoming a boy or a girl, and he is, he is a boy and wants to become a girl, this should be definitely told to the parents. And anyone that did not do it uh, would be uh, doing something very, very evil, actually, according to the Bible. Uh, 